So did any of you get a chance to look over the a little bit the 2.3 homework while we were on break there? Yeah. Yes. Um, so Christina, is there is there are did you have any questions from it or um, you and I had talked earlier about Stat Crunch and using Stat Crunch. Did you find a question on which Stat Crunch might have uh, been? I think six or, six or eight. Number six or eight will work. Okay, so let me look at those two. If any of the rest of you can, because remember when I get into my math, my Stat Lab, when I share the screen, you can't really see it. Now I'm, I'm going to uh, get in on another device. And I can, weirdly, I can hold that device up and show you what I'm doing, but um, it's going to be a little weird to do that. But so I'm going to go to the 2.3 homework. I'm going to try to say what I'm going to do and see if you can follow it. If you're in my my stat lab, go to that, and I'm hoping you can hear my voice through Blackboard, even though you're going to my stat lab. Um, so let me know. So Christina, are, are you in my stat lab? Are you able to look at your question in my stat lab and still hear me talking in Blackboard? Yes. Okay, that's great. So that's kind of what I want you guys to do. If you can, is go to my stat lab. Hold on, it kind of logged me out. I got to start. I probably have to log in again. Hold on just a second. I'm just logging into it. All right. So. Okay, there we are. Sorry, it's it's going kind of slow. Um, preview. Okay. So you said number six or number eight. Okay, number six is fine. And uh, yeah, that's a pretty good one. And number six, if you guys are going to number six, now our problems are going to be slightly different, so your answer won't be the same as mine. But on number six, it says, uh, it gives me some numbers, and it says the length and words of seven articles from a particular newspaper are listed below. Find the mean, median, and mode. So that's the question. So I'm looking at number six. It says find the mean, median, and mode. And it says, um, if any of these measures cannot be found or does not represent the center of the data, explain why. So the first thing is to find the mean. Now, we know how we would do this if we were doing it by hand. We know that to find the mean, we would add the numbers and divide by, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, it looks like there's seven numbers. And to find the median, we would put them in order and find the one in the middle. And since there's an odd number of numbers, they would um, there would be one number in the middle. And then um, the mode would be if there's a number repeated. I'm looking at mine. And it's kind of hard to tell, and they're not in order already. So what I'm going to show you something that you can do with StatCrunch. If you look over in the upper right-hand corner, the question help, you know the question hamburger over here? And when you click on that, oh, I'm sorry, you don't need to do that, next to the data value. So you have these data values here. The last one on mine, you don't have to click on that. The last one on mine, there's actually a little uh, thing that looks like this. In fact, I think it's blue. It looks kind of like this. And if you hover over it, and click, it'll say open, a choice you have is to open in StatCrunch. So if you're doing this with me, 
open your data in StatCrunch. So I've opened mine. I've told it to open in StatCrunch. And the thing that's nice about this is that when you do this, it really StatCrunch is nothing more than an Excel spreadsheet. That's what it is. But when you open it in StatCrunch, it automatically populates under this column called VAR1. It'll automatically populate. So I'm going to write down my data values. This is basically all we're doing. So we can do this together. This is all we're doing for the rest of class. One, two, seven, nine, uh, one, two, thirty. And these are the ones on mine. One, two, seven, four. And it would be helpful if I could put those in order. That's what I'm going to do first to show you how you can put these this automatically populated uh, list in order. Um, so that you can see where the middle is and also because you can't find the median without putting them in order. Um, if you have a lot of numbers, this is especially helpful. Seven, this isn't too bad. I could do this by hand, but it's going to be a little easier to do in StatCrunch and you can have StatCrunch put them in order for you. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I've got this now. I'm in StatCrunch. Then if you look across the top, you have some different um tabs across the top and the tab I want you to look for is data and there will be a drop down and what we're going to do first with this is we're going to sort so we go down and we're going to choose sort and when we choose sort uh, it says select a column so I'm going to I'm going to select a column. So I clicked next to select a column. So I clicked on that. And then I'm going to click on that VAR1 because remember that was the name of the column where they put the data value. So I'm going to click I'm going to select VAR1. So I click on that. Okay, so I clicked on that. When you do that, you can see that VAR1 appears over here on the right side. And then it says, you see it says sort criteria, and there's a couple of choices. And it's, the default is ascending, meaning from smallest to biggest. So the default is good, so you don't have to do anything there. And then you can either replace the current column or put it, uh, create a new column. I like to create a new column because I don't like to get rid of the original data. And so I always select create a new column. But if you want to, if you click on replace the current column, what it does is it keeps everything in this column. It just puts it in order. So I'm going to create a new column. And then we're going to click. Uh, so that's up to you, whether you replace the column or create a new one. And then you're going to click um, compute even though we're not really computing anything. We're just doing. And when I click that, value by sort by, oh, so, oh, I have to, I have to, where it says sort by, I have to select that too. So where it says sort criteria, I skipped a step. It told me I messed up. Under sort criteria, I had to sort by, and I had to choose, um, var one again. It's like variable one. That's what that means. I had to choose that again because apparently this wasn't enough. So, and then compute. So, what I want to do, I'm going, going to disengage my mouse here so I can hold the screen up and show it to you. So, you might have to enlarge this. Um, can you see my screen? This is a weird thing to do. So this is what I have now. So under under var one are the original data, and notice it put sorted var one in the second one, and now they're in order for me. And now I can tell of those seven values, the middle one is going to be the fourth one, and so I can tell right off the bat that the median 
that's the easy one to get there. The median is the middle number after I sort it, so I've at least got that. And I can see that none of them are the same. When you sort it, it's easy to find ones that are the same because they'll be together. And I don't have any of the same values on mine, so I have no mode. Now on the test, I'm going to expect you to show the work for finding the mean. And I'm going to expect you to know that. Remember, the formula for mean is not on your formula sheet. So I expect you to know how to find the mean. But we can use StatCrunch to check the mean. OK? So I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can use StatCrunch, since we have time. And we'll talk about how to use StatCrunch to check your mean. I'm going to expect to see. Um, the work for the mean. But we're going to look at StatCrunch and see how to check the mean. So I, I got this here. So I'm going to erase these instructions so I can go to new instructions. And let me separate that stuff over there. This is what we're doing on right now. And then later we're going to talk about the proctorial practice quiz. I wish I hadn't put these right in the middle of the board, but I did. All right, so let's suppose. Oh, my, I have to read up. I have to have my mouse back up. OK. And um, so the next thing we want to do is go to, if, if we want to compute the mean, or there's all kinds of things we can compute about the data in StatCrunch. Go to the tab at the top this time that says stat. And when you click on that drop down, you get lots of things. Um, what, the one that we're going to find the most helpful is summary stats. which is pretty close to the top. And then the thing that we're going to look at is a column. So we're going to select column because our data is in a column. Remember, I, I ordered it. In my, it's in my, I have the unordered column on mine, and then I have a second column with it ordered. And it isn't going to matter which one you pick because they have the same numbers in them. But um, we're going to select column here because our data is in a column, not a row. So I, and when I select column, then I get a screen. Let me show you what the screen looks like. It's going to make me choose some things. So my screen looks, I'm going to try to do this without a glare. I don't know if you guys can see it. <laughs> can you see it? Or is it all glary? So you'll see a screen like this. And so it won't matter which column you choose. Could y'all see it or not? Nobody answered me. Type in the chat at least. Sorry, um, we can see it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to kind of hold it here and show you what I'm going to select. OK, so I'm going to try to do this with this. It won't matter which column you select because they both have the same numbers in them. So you can get the unsorted. The reason why we sorted them was mainly so we could see the median and the mode. But we don't need them sorted for the mean. So it doesn't really matter on this. So I'll select that one. Notice it appeared over there on the right. And it says where. Notice that's optional. Group by is optional. And down here, you'll see the statistics it's going to give us. It's going to give us little n, which is the sample size. And it's going to give us the mean, the variance, standard deviation. So notice it, it puts some things here automatically. And you can, you can just keep that default. That will usually get you everything you want. Um, and then let's see. I need to, I need to move this. I, I keep wanting to do this. I have one that's a touch screen. This one is not. And so I need to move this, hold on, so that we can see everything.
I'm going to move that up so I can see everything. And um, then if you say compute at the bottom. So really all I had to do was I had to select the column. And actually, I, it looks like I selected both of them. So it doesn't matter which one. Somehow I selected both of them. And really, once you select that column, you're ready to compute. And so when I click compute, it gives me a table. I'm going to show it to you. Okay. I'm going to try to get this up close so you can kind of see what it looks like. And you'll see that it gave me the mean. It gave me n. Notice little n is 7 on this. That's because there were 7 data values. Little n, remember, is sample size. It gave me the mean, variance, which we haven't talked about, variance or standard deviation. Um, one thing you might want to do is double check your sum. It will also sum them for you. But it gave me a mean of, I'm going to write this down on the board. And since these are whole numbers, I would round that mean to the tenths place. Remember, we talked about rounding one place after the data. And so I'm seeing a mean of 1179. And if I round to the tenths place, well, the, the number in the tenths place is a 1. Then the next number is a 4. So we would round this to 1179.1. Okay, so I gave you, this is how, this is to find um, the mean. These are the instructions. So we went under data and sorted to put them in order. And then we go under stat and summary stats in order to find the mean. And it also gave the median on this list, the median was 1230. We already, so see, I just checked that. And it doesn't give mode here. There are different statistics you can choose, and if you want to choose one that's not in the default, you can um, click on it and it'll move it over and do that stat for you as well. Now, this should be the, um, the information for a sample. And if you want the population mean or something, then you have to change it. Although with mean, it doesn't matter. With mean, the population mean, the sample mean will come out the same. So let's say I wanted to double check this. And see, is this what I would have gotten if I had done it the normal way? Well, then that means I would need to add these and find the sum. So let's just review how to get the mean of a data set. And I'm going to try to do this quickly. We're still good on time. 11.25 plus 8.19 plus 11.56 plus 12.79 plus 12.30 plus 12.74. And that gives me a sum of 6,883. That's the sum of my X sub I's. And so if I was showing the work for the mean, the mean, the sample mean would be X bar. And I would have that 6,883. And I would divide by little n, which was 7 in this case. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I only see 6 here. Was an n supposed to be 7? I must be missing one. Let me see what I'm missing. Hold on just a second, because I didn't write them all down, apparently. 1125, 819, 1156, 1279, 1230, 6. Oh, wait. Oh, there's a 1371 in there. So that I didn't see. So I need to add that 1371. And that changes my sum. 
So these are things, did you notice how I double check on myself? I know there's seven data values, okay? And I double checked and I realized, hey, I only have six numbers here. So then I have to go back and figure out, okay, which number am I missing? And now I know I need to adjust. So, and this is true in all maths, but I would say especially in statistics, is that as you go, you double check to make sure you're including everything, that the things you're doing make sense. Um, so you don't just like forge ahead, you know, I'm, I'm moving ahead no matter what. That's, no, that's not the way to do it. It's every time you do something, don't st stop a second, double check. Did I include all the numbers? Did I type them right in my calculator? That kind of thing. And so now I have 82.54. And if I divide that by 7, hopefully I get, and what my calculator says is 1179.1428. And notice that's what we got for the mean. So you see I could have used StatCrunch to check this answer. And if I had used the wrong sum here, of course I would have gotten the wrong answer, but StatCrunch, I could have checked it really fast in StatCrunch to see if I did it right. So that's a quick explanation of how you can use StatCrunch to sort your data, which helps you find the median and the mode, and also how you can do summary statistics to find the mean and there are other things, and we'll talk about the other things in a later assignment. So, Christina, you had asked about StatCrunch, so does that uh, get you through for what we need right now? Yes, thank you. Terrific. The last thing I want to talk to you about is the proctorial practice quiz. As you know, the tests are all going to be proctored through Proctorio. Now, this is a new thing for me, and it's maybe a new thing for some of you if you've never taken an online class before. So my thought is I'm putting a practice quiz on there and I'm putting legitimate questions in it. Like I think I put four questions in it. Uh, the purpose is really to practice with Proctorio, but I thought while we're at it, let's go ahead and practice some of the things that might show up on test one. So I picked four questions. I think I picked the first three come from 2.1 and 2.2, and the last one is from this section. It's, it's kind of like the one we just did, find the mean, median, and mode. In fact, I think it may be exactly like the one we just did. And I don't have it available yet. I'm hoping to have it available to you tomorrow. I'm going to have it available up until like the day before we take test one, so like until September 20th. Uh, but, and I, but I'm giving you two attempts, so what I'd like for you to do is once I get it up, I'd like for you to attempt it before next Wednesday's class so that on Wednesday next week we can talk about any issues that anybody had with Proctorio. So let's talk about taking tests for just a second because there's some things you need to do to prepare for taking a test in this class. So one of the things you need to do is everybody needs to send me a picture of a picture ID. This can be driver's license. It can be, and um, if on the picture, if you want to put, you know, I don't need to know your driver's license number. I just need it to have your name and a picture. So for that matter, it could be another kind of picture ID. It doesn't have to be a driver's license. So, so and you're going to send this to me by email. So you're going to email a picture of a picture ID. If you're going to use your driver's license and, and you want to protect your privacy or something, when you take a picture of it, you can um, maybe put a piece of string or a piece of put, put a little thing over uh, the number or over your address or whatever you, you don't want, as long as I can see your name and the picture, that's all I care about. Okay, so you're going to do that, and then you're going to do this uh, proctorio practice quiz. Now, because I've not given a test for you before, I'm kind of using this as also a trial run 
to find out how I want it to go. I want you to try to treat this as if it was a test. Okay? So on this, I want you to only use a calculator. We're going to pretend this is a test. We're going to use the calculator. And for test one, you can have the test one formula sheet. Now, that formula sheet isn't going to help you a lot on these four questions because they're from 2, 1 through 2, 3. But I still want you to have it there, or you could, for the practice test, you can have a, um, a sheet to represent the formula sheet, like you can just write formula sheet if you haven't printed it off yet. Just write that on a piece of paper. Because what I'm going to want you to do at the beginning of the test is I'm going to want you to um, hold up your picture ID and put it down. Hold up your calculator and your formula sheet because you're going to have your webcam on and put it down. Okay? And then um, it may, Proctorio may ask you to show the surrounding area. When you're taking a quiz or a test with Proctorio, you need to make sure nobody else is in the room with you and the microphone should be turned on. All right? So we need, um, so during the test, during the test and the quiz, because remember the quiz is a, is a, a trial run. During the quiz test, so no one else in the room. You can't leave and come back. So you have to do this in one session. So when you take a test, the test is going to be a little longer. I mean, doing four questions in a quiz, not that big of a deal. But when you take the test, that's going to be longer. And I'm going to be giving you uh, about two hours to take the test. It shouldn't take you that long, but if it does, you can take that long. You can take your time, but you can't get up and go to the bathroom during that time. Okay. I'm okay with you having something. If you're, if you're eating or drinking something that won't really bother me. Uh, but you can't get up and leave or else proctorial will flag you. You can't visit other websites on your device. Your phone should be put away. So you can't, and I'm going to send instructions about this too. So uh, I've run out of room here, but I'm going to send you instructions for this proctorial practice quiz. So watch for that in an email. And I'm going to list all of the things you have to be careful about while you're taking a quiz or test with proctorio. So um, let me see. But I, um, we might as well talk about them now, and then if you have questions, you can ask me. So you can't have anybody else in the room. You need to have your microphone and your camera on. You can't leave during the quiz or the test. Um, you may have to demonstrate what you have on the desk, your workspace. You And so, and, and I don't know if that's going to be possible or required or not. So that's partly, that's one of the reasons why we're doing this. And um, you can't leave the my stat lab site basically you're going to click on the test in blackboard it's going to take you to my stat lab where you will take the test okay and then you'll submit that test okay and then i don't know if it comes back to blackboard or not you may have to come back black it may bring you back to blackboard you may have to uh click submit again i'm, I'm not sure that's why we're doing the practice okay so um, let me see if I've forgotten anything else. If I ask you to show your work in my math lab, in my stat lab, then you need to click on the show work. And I've given you a practice for that. Um, if you've done work on um, a piece of paper, other work, then I'm going to want you to, in, within a certain amount of time after the test, I'm going to expect you to take a picture of that work and email it to me. So, which I'm, I'm not wild about. This is kind of an arduous process to go through to give a test. It takes me a long time to grade these. But what Proctorio is going to do is it's going to be creating a video of you while you're taking your test. 
Your phone should be put away. In fact, I think it says to put the phone in another room so that it doesn't disturb you in any way. It should be off or silent and in another room. And um, you need a quiet place where you won't be disturbed. For me, that would probably involve having to have my animals, you know, locked out because they would make all kinds of noise, especially the cat. And so um, all of these things, it's going to be a little bit harder because you're not going to be able to get up and leave and to take a break during the test. So you need to make sure you're ready to take the test in one sitting once you start it. And Proctorial will create a video of you taking the test. And then I will have access to that video to watch. Seems it's a lot of stuff. And we're in this together. We're going to practice it together. I put two attempts so that you could practice twice if you wanted to. Does anybody have a question right off the bat? Okay. Well, I will yeah. send. Yeah. I think I missed some. Um, when are we actually taking the test? I think I, I missed it. I didn't catch it's the, on, the It's on the checklist planner. But, and I haven't set a due date yet or put the test in my stat lab yet. But okay. uh, it's scheduled for September 21st, but that's on the second page of your checklist planner. So everybody, make sure you print off that checklist planner. And let me double check here and see if anybody's present who wasn't present in the earlier session. So let's see, Cecil. See you, Diamond, Layla, Christina was here, but she left, Mia, Samira, Stephanie, Temperance. Okay, so um, I can't stress enough, guys, how important it is for you to find that checklist planner in the unit one folder under lessons and print it off so that you know, because it tells you every day what we're doing. Then you will never wonder, where am I supposed to be? I noticed I, I had a couple of emails during the break. People were asking about the office hours that I sent out if I was changing the class time. No, I'm not changing the class time. All of you were here, so you know. The class time is still 1030. That's class time. Office hours are times when I'm going to be available on Blackboard. If you use the and you can use those links to join in during my office hours. So you can kind of think of it as a time outside of class when I'm going to be in a Blackboard collaborate room and you can come and in any time during those office hours and ask me a question about anything that you're having difficulty with. So does anybody have a question about the test or about my office hours? Okay, well, it's 1235, so we need to end class. And um, remember, we don't have class on Monday, so I won't be talking to you again on, until Wednesday. I do have office hours this afternoon and tomorrow afternoon if you need to talk to me in those links are found under um, contact information, instructor contact information. Okay, so you guys have a great weekend, great long weekend, and try to get all caught up on the homework so you will have no place to go but forward, okay?